All right, guys, it's time for a new show, and we're really, really excited here at The Truth Matters. I am here with some fabulous guests, and of course, my brother from another mother across the pond, Craig Walker, is here as usual with us. How are you doing, Craig? I'm brilliant. Thank you, Shana. It's good to be here with these amazing people and with yourself, of course. I've got a mic set up. I've just set it up, and everyone's saying it sounds loads better, so I think I'm going to start using this in future. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, excited for today. Um, I've just, let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, and it looks cool too, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> I'm a pro now. Yes, yeah, so before we get started, I just want to remind everyone, go to drshornell.com and get on the newsletter. That's the best way to know what's going on here on the show and, and anything else that's going on too. We're doing, we have a lot of things going on all the time. We have our monthly meetings. We have our membership. There's all kinds of... Um, great resources there as far as books and training online courses and biofeedback soul audits all the things so go there get on there and that way what's going on um we're gonna discuss something really cool um these guys are you're very familiar with and they have been on a show several times and actually we've been on their show too so you're probably not seeing um any strangers here unless you're brand new to this but um we're going to talk about their documentary that they released, I choose to remember when, um, on the Cahokia Mounds, which I know zero about, I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to rely solely on you guys to explain what's going on with that. And I'll look forward to watching it. But um, tell us a little bit about yourself, just for like people who don't know who you guys are, just because, you know, they have a podcast and they do great conferences and lots of things. But I want to hear from the horse's mouth a little bit about you individually how you guys met and, you know, just the genesis of journey of truth. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us on. Um, so we're just two ordinary guys who went through an awakening. We met each other at a conference, uh, as many of us do. And we decided to start a podcast five years ago and just for fun, a passion project. And it turned into so much more. We're now hosting conferences, filming documentaries, uh, we started a Patreon, we're doing webinars, and the podcast is still, you know, going strong after five years, and there's no end in sight. Actually, I just see it uh, when I sit with it and meditate on it, I just see it growing and and turning into something. Uh, I, I don't know what it's going to turn into, but I just know I see it growing, and and Aaron, you can add to that if you want, but um, yeah, that's in a nutshell kind of what we're doing, and we cover everything, and, and Aaron, you can kind of cover it, like, let the audience know some of the stuff that we cover. Yeah. Uh, what Tyler said, we met at a conference in Colorado and realized we both lived in St. Louis. So we started hanging out, had an idea for uh, starting up a podcast, just jumped into it and it just kind of snowballed, kept going and building. And now it's like, we're doing our own conferences and, and what, like you said, webinars and documentaries and we're each writing our own books right now and all kinds of stuff. So it's really exciting. And um, it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure and just a blessing to be a part of this awakening, you know, to just be a small part of it and to, to, um, be able to, you know, do something, you know, that, that is, we feel like we're helping with this and, and we're a part of it. So, um, so yeah, what else did you want me to talk about? <laughs> oh, nothing. I think that's it. That's it. No, that's perfect. I think for me, I mean, I, I think I've said this before and I, and I, you know, I don't say this lightly, but in, in all seriousness, for me personally, you know, your podcast is the go-to place for all things kind of spiritual disclosure. Um, you know, cause I know that you have a, you're doing the inner work. You know, I know you as, as people as well, you're truly yeah. doing the work and that reflects in your output as well um and you know even when mistakes have been made and um you owned it and and you just fessed up done with dealt with there was no trying to cover it up trying to you know egotistically right. make something of it and that just speaks volumes of where you're coming from so for me personally and for many people that i've spoken to who've been to your conferences as well that there's a different vibe there a very special vibe and speaking of the conference i believe you've announced <laughs> The conference or actually we're recording you've not quite announced it yet but when this is aired you will have announced when it, this so. is aired i think we yeah. Will. yeah 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 so why don't you tell us a little bit about your conference before we get into the Cahokia mounds Absolutely. yeah so we're doing a third conference uh the first one was uh something i never thought we'd do 
Mm-hmm. And it was a success and we had overwhelming feedback and people wanted the second one. So we kind of, uh, I really wasn't for sure. We weren't sure if we were going to do a second one mm-hmm. and we kind of pulled the trigger on it and it was, a. Uh, it was awesome. Actually, the vibe was even better than the first one, and, and it went really well. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of this time, the venue, they while we were at the conference last year, they wanted us, they, they told us that we were their favorite event that they host every year. Um, you know, the staff, they were all wearing our T-shirts, that whole place. They're like, <laughs> they're, they get it. They get it. And it's a perfect yeah. match for us. And and so they cool. they wanted us back. They're like, let's book the dates now and blah, blah, blah. So uh, no. it was just all, it just kind of fell into place. And we're doing a third one, May 13th through the 16th, uh, 2024 in Grafton, Illinois. Same place again. And uh, we have a great lineup. We're calling it Rebels of Disclosure. I and love that. We're really, we're really excited about it. This year, the energy feels a bit bigger than the past two years for some reason. I don't know how to explain that, but I feel it. Um, I don't know what to expect with this one, but I'm excited. A little more excited this year than I have been about all of them. So, right, right. I, I feel like we have, Sorry, I would go. Go on, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just saying. I feel like we have the best speaker lineup so far this this uh, for this coming year. Right. Um, and not that, you know, we love everyone that we've had speak. Absolutely. But um, like the first, so the first year was strictly, it was like secret space program themed. It was called, we called it the secret space conference. So we had mostly, most of the speakers were SSP experiencers. Uh, and, and then we also had like Laura Eisenhower and a couple other that weren't, but mostly they were. And then last year we're like, okay, let's make it just a general conference that covers all areas not just secret space programs so um and we so we had people in all areas and i think tony rod riggs was the only ssp guy um and it was amazing and it was it was phenomenal but then i feel like this year we so we were doing that again but we really i don't know like how it just bigger and like our the speakers i feel like are even more you know I don't know. It's, it just feels like it's going to be amazing. And, and uh, it's kind of got like that Star Wars theme to it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask, gonna... what is the theme? It's Star Wars. Awesome. It's not really Star Wars themed, but it's, well, it's... we're marketing it as, you know, with that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, if you want, I can share my screen real quick and show you the flyer if you want to yeah, see it. Yeah. Yeah. Show one us. Up, one up. Um, you have to, you'll have to click that other screen there. There we go. So, oh, it is cool. There you go. We have um, Niara oh, Isley. <laughs> yeah, Niara oh, Isley. We're having a run soon. Oh, are you? Awesome. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, Niara yeah. Isley, Tony Red Riggs, Jackie Kenner, Lowell Johnson, Inner Earth. You know, he's going to be talking about Telos. Lexi Eisenhower, you guys, everyone loves her. Mason mm. Fury, we've had him on the show a few times. He's one of our affiliates with Merlin's Lab, but he has he, incredible information. Not many people know about him. Uh, he's somebody you guys should definitely interview. Um, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a wealth of knowledge. And uh, Laura Eisenhower, as everyone knows, and then Aaron and I are actually going to be speaking this year. That's the first time we're giving ourselves a slot to speak um, individually. We're going to each be doing our own individual presentations. Vivian Chavez, Arcturian Channel. Uh, Sherry Divband is coming back and Brad Olson is coming back and we still have one more slot. We're waiting on some uh, we're waiting on some responses from uh, a few people and we'll determine who that last uh, slot is going to be. But uh, we're excited. By the time, by the time this airs, that, might, that slot might have been right older, for, the, for the record. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. This time we don't have a field, but by the time this airs, that very well might okay cool no that's a brilliant lineup and uh <clears throat> yeah so um i love the whole idea of rebels because to me um you know society tries to make out that rebels are the bad guys but it's quite the opposite the rebels are usually the good guys i mean the rebels in star wars are the ones who are rebelling against the empire right isn't that right, what right. this is all about and every kind of spiritual master in history has been a rebel in their society and culture and often they've been demonized for it but like you people rise up and and rebel against the kind of um controls that they try and put on you and, and i'm all about that i love it so and i love that title that's brilliant mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly and it's not like every 
I mean, everyone in this movement is a rebel, you know, everyone, right. I guess you could say anyone who gets it and you know, you just like standing up for yourself and standing your ground. Um, I don't know. And it's just a fun theme. It's, it's an exciting theme. And uh, yeah, we could talk about it all day, but there's so much more to talk about. So yeah, uh, yeah we're just excited for it. Awesome. Awesome. So I know, Craig, you have seen the Cahokia Mounds documentary. I have indeed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I watched it, um, which I highly recommend it to everyone, by the way. Um, the first thing that, that struck me is, again, something you guys tend to capture is um, such a, a high vibe, you know, frequency on everything that you do. And that's why I think a lot of people are attracted to, to you and what you do. And this was no different. I mean, I think I put on it. I, obviously, I like music. Uh, the music, the choices of music, the, the quality of the content, the, the the style, the media was just outstanding. Um, it really added to the actual content, uh, which was extremely interesting. I knew nothing about the Koki Man. I never heard of it before. So I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, you know. Um, and at the end of it, I think I said, I felt like I was some sort of activist on behalf of Koki Mounds, you know. <laughs> um, it really appealed to the emotions. Um, and obviously, the, the way you um, honoured Clifford Mahuti as well. Um, I could have sat and listened to that guy for hours and hours. Um, and what a great honour it was to have him with us. Um, but, um, you know, I, I know it's relatively local to you. Where, how did you find out about it? I mean, is it, have you always been drawn to it? Was it a spiritual thing or was it something you'd heard of? I mean, how did it all start for you? Not always. It wasn't I it actually like I knew about it my whole life, but I was never really drawn to it until until my awakening. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, wait, this is an ancient structure. This is an ancient civilization, an uh, ancient city right here, 25 minutes from my house. Like wow. that was bigger than London at one point. There's over 50,000 people there. Um, it mimics the, the South American cities like mm -hmm. Teotihuacan and others, like the layout mimics the South American Aztec cities. Yeah. And I realized then that the history surrounding it is bogus. Like, like yeah. they tell you some rudimentary Native American history that doesn't make really any sense. Like it might explain the last civilization that resided there, but it doesn't explain really where those mounds come from. The explanations you know, that they give that they were built with buckets of dirt and all this, like, it's like laughable, right. actually. Millions and, of buckets of dirt, like right. that took so many years, you know, it's like in my, it, it, to Tyler and I, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. It was built by an advanced civilization. And I think it goes back to Atlantis times mm -hmm. personally. Um, and of course that's not supposed to be possible. So they're, oh yeah, it was built. They'll tell you like a few thousand years ago, but we don't know who built it or who really lived there and where they went, you know. Um, but yeah. clearly there were and clearly there were like giants involved um, right. with a lot of the mounds, not just Cahokia. And supposedly there were giant skeletons found in at least in Monk's Mound, the big the biggest mound there. And, um, and among other things that aren't supposed to exist. And they stopped excavating mysteriously for no one really knows why they just. They started excavating and then they stopped when they got only like 1% of it excavated. And you got to ask yourself yeah. why. Well, if they really found all that stuff, that's why they stopped officially. Exactly. At least they know what's there, though, you know. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot going on there that's not out there on the mainstream level that you can't like. So you got to dig deeper to get the real information. That's what we tried to do with this documentary is, OK, what's really going on with these mounds? What's what's the real uh, story here? And try to get as much um, in, real information as we could basically in, uh, mm -hmm. real yeah it, it's interesting the giants uh actually the two giants um they weren't found in monk's mound but they were found near it uh and there's yeah. a the, the only evidence we have of that is an old st louis post-dispatch newspaper article that talks about two giants um eight between eight and nine feet tall and um double rows of teeth that's the big thing and potentially six fingers and six toes an extra digit too um but they had double rows of teeth and that was documented that was actually in the article well that comes up around the the world giants with double rows of teeth i mean that's something that's very I common i had never heard of that you think they're okay keep going Go it's, ahead. it's a different so we're looking at a different race potentially an et or you know another humanoid race bigfoot, that isn't, bigfoot kind of stuff uh, no there's two things of teeth 
No, it's not Bigfoot. No, definitely not. Like it's the, if you've ever heard of the red haired giants of Lovelock Cave or Nevada, yeah. like yeah. We're potentially like the red headed giants. And then there's old articles you can find of Native Americans actually like, hunting these giants. And there's photos of them like with the giant like tied up as their kill, whether or not it's a real photo or not. It's really hard to tell these days. But there is a history, regardless of the photos, um, documented history of the giants. And then it's also in petroglyphs. Uh, giants are mm -hmm. in petroglyphs all over the world as well. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and also, um, there's a lot of evidence that there were bir bird-like extraterrestrials that were uh, that lived Involved. with them, that visited right. and lived with them. And so there's uh, a slab of bird in a picture of them. Yeah. Well, they're, the main artifact at the Cahokia was the Birdman tablet, and they bird dug up the, the Birdman body. It was a guy dressed as a bird. But um, in the museum itself, they even say that they believe these bird beings were a co cosmic beings and not humans. So um, there's an E.T., a bird-like E.T. connection. There's giants. Aliens. And uh, were so you going to say something, Chanel? Oh, sorry. Chanel, were I'm you going to say something? I was just wondering, because... Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just wondering because usually the natives are pretty peaceful and don't like kill things unless they're going to eat it or need it for like supplies or resources. Were they bad? I mean, were they hurting people? Like what would be the point of killing them? Well, the lore behind it, the red-headed giants is that they were cannibals. Uh, yeah. Or, oh. and they, yeah. So you know, they would... A Nephilim in the Bible, it's the same, yeah. it's supposedly the same exact beings. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. So it was for and to protect according, their family. According to remote viewers and channelers and psychics and everyone who's looked at the big monk's mound, which is actually has a base that's bigger than the Pyramid of Giza. Uh, when people there's something buried there that they've tried to drill through, they can't penetrate it. It's like 30 feet long by like six feet wide, like the shape of our sarcophagus. <clears throat> remote viewers channelers um across the board without knowing each other all come up with giant they think there's a, a giant skeleton in there between 15 and 30 feet tall nobody actually knows but regardless we have corroborating data that might indicate that there's a giant one of those giants actually is still buried there wow anybody fancy getting a spade book it in spade and <laughs> finna go <laughs> right a bucket and spade and having a dig. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting what you say about, because um, obviously over here in the UK, we have so many ancient sites. Um, oh, yeah. Particularly in the north. I live in the north of England. So originally back in the day where I live was actually a part of what is now Scotland. Um, it was originally called Pitland, um, land of the Picts. Um, and so like there's a, there's a county near where I am called Cumbria, still very, very... <coughs> It's just beneath the Scottish Highlands. Um, <clears throat> it was the Romans that pushed them north and built Hadrian's Wall to keep them out, basically. Anyway, bit of history there. Um, but near where I am, there's stone circles, there's, uh, you know, and, and islands off the coast and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it makes me laugh because the official, like, board next to the, um, there's, a, there's a stone circle called Castle Rig, um, and it's the largest one in Europe, largest stone circle in Europe. And it's only about an hour from my house. Um, and uh, the official board next to it, you know, from like historic England or whatever, says, oh, yeah, they, they, they erected these stones as a, as a trading place where they would come and like trade animals. I'm like, are you having a laugh? Like, right. why would they do yeah. that? That makes no sense whatsoever. Right, it's clearly, right. I mean, it's in the most idyllic scenic. It's in this valley. You know, there's these <clears> mountains <throat> around them. Uh, the energy there is, is amazing. Um, well, it's just in the middle of just you, anybody can just go to it, you know. Um, for people yeah. want to hear, it's called Castle Rig, Castle Rig R I W G at the end. If you want to research it, it's very fascinating what's there. Yeah, and there, there's a uh, obvious Smithsonian cover up with the giants, and Indeed, we covered yeah. that. Aaron did a great job covering that in the documentary. And maybe you can tell the audience a little bit what you found while you were researching that. Yeah, the Smithsonian, and it goes back to the 1800s. Um, so the, you think the Smithsonian is its own like entity, but it's really directly connected to the government and therefore the deep state as we know. So uh, they use it as, you know, the the arm of like, the Smithsonian is supposed to be the like 
everything history in North America, at least, is like if the Smithsonian says it's real, then it's real. If they say it's not, it's not. You know, they're supposed to be the authority, right? Well, mm -hmm. of course, we know it's a part of the control system. So it goes back to the 1800s when um, this guy named um, uh, John Wesley Powell, uh, who um, was like the guy that started it basically, and he created this like doctrine, which they still use to this day of the whole Columbus narrative. So Columbus is supposed to have discovered, you know, he didn't discover <laughs> America. He, mm -hmm. he uh, oh, got here and oh, there's a bunch of native, you know, people here, but you know, we're going to take over, you know, and that's what ends up happening, whatever. Um, he discovered it from the Europe, you know, discovered it. Um, and so the, the official narrative is supposed to be all that was here was these primitive, you know, they viewed them as primitive as we know they were more spiritually, you know, advanced, but, oh, there's these primitive uh, natives here. And, and that's all that's ever existed in North America before us, you know, and that's not true at all. And in fact, there's tons and tons of evidence that points to the fact that there's been advanced civilizations that that uh you know egyptians were over here that uh you know and then obviously goes back to atlantis and lemuria and all that there were clearly advanced civilizations on every continent going back many thousands of years and in, including north america but um anything that ever gets found and you know and of course giants don't fit into you know there's not supposed to be anything other than humans as well right <laughs> so they find right. these giants that clearly aren't humans oh we got to cover that up Oh, there's all this evidence of advanced civilizations. We got to cover that up. So the Smithsonian, so John Lewis Powell basically created this doctrine of, you know, uh, the Bureau of we're, we're the most advanced race on the planet, and we discovered North America and anything that anything that's found archaeologically that seems to go against that, we're just must be dismissed outright, outright without mm -hmm. without investigating it anything just it's got to be either fake or it's well, not real it's no important way. it's important to understand that this isn't just like uh you saying this so there's a bureau of ethnology yeah. and their first annual annual report and i think the late 1800s um it says within that first report that is basically a smithsonian report that anything anterior to the discovery of columbus shall be considered illegitimate so illegitimate. basically it's in their own the Smithsonian Smith, yeah. Smithsonian's own writing in their own documents that anything that, that goes against the discovery of Columbus will be considered illegitimate, and that includes mm -hmm. giants. And that's why we have all these giant skeletons being swooped up by the Smithsonian. Smithsonian, I can't say that word today, and uh, <laughs> destroyed or right. hidden, and it's not taken to preserve it, like you said, it's taken to hide it. So they're not, they're clearly not interested in the truth. Yeah, they're just creating their own historic, like, timeline, which that right. has happened with right. so many things, right? Where mm -hmm. they're just, like, writing history on their own. And, like, they're right. taking all the shit out of, like, the, the kids' books and history books and stuff like that, similar to that. And they're and they're openly telling us that we we have a narrative of history that we want to be true no matter what and we're going to make sure that's that's all that we um that gets out there basically like we're we're not going to even even if we find things that go against what we want to believe we're going to get rid of it hide it do whatever we can to eliminate it well, and they it's, tell it's, us this all right and it's important to understand. So there was a cave that we covered in this documentary too, a cave in Southern Illinois. First of all, Southern Illinois is known as Little Egypt. All the towns are named after towns in Egypt. There's Pyramid Lake, there's Cairo, there's all this stuff. Um, and there were there was a cave discovered in 1925 that had th thousands of artifacts, including gold, but they were Egyptian artifacts. And there were ancient ET and like Roman looking Mediterranean artifacts. There were stone and they've been all, you know, forensically analyzed and um, they predate the discovery of Columbus. So they couldn't have been hoaxed and put here after that. So we have uh, evidence of an Egyptian civilization and the, so and in, in North America. Right. So that's not supposed to exist either. And what's interesting is the Cahokia Mound site. There's like 80 mounds, but it used to extend over the Mississippi River into St. Louis, Missouri. There was 40 mounds over there, some big mounds. 
and they destroyed those mounds during the construction of St. Louis. And while they destroyed those mounds, there were also artifacts found that depicted men and men with shields and armor and helmets. Mm -hmm. So that corroborates the stones that came out of the cave in Southern Illinois. So we're mm -hmm. talking about not just Native American history or giant history. We're talking about another civilization that has been erased from North America. And yeah. this is where you can get into the Tartaria stuff in the World's Fair. It would right. align more with that type of civilization. So there's artifacts of them. There's Native American artifacts. There's giant skeletons. There's extraterrestrial ancient alien artifacts clearly depicting ETs and UFOs. I mean, yeah. we have an insane history right here in the Midwest. And that's what the whole purpose of this documentary is, is to uh, shine some light on that and tell a story mm -hmm. that's not told anywhere else online about that site. Wow. Well, I've heard, and, and I can't remember where I heard this, and again, take it with a grain of salt, but it, this is kind of good and bad news at the same time. But like, mm -hmm. I always thought the Smithsonian Institute would take these artifacts and, and evidences and destroy them. I was like, no, but apparently that these are the sort of things that are being stored underneath the Vatican. That they're actually yeah. associated with the Vatican, and there was the, all the archives there. That's where everything, all the evidence of our history, of the history of the planet, is all underneath mm -hmm. the Vatican. And, uh, I'd like to they, think that's they, true. Go on. And there's lots of evidence that, like, there's people's personal testimonies, and there's evidence that the Smithsonian or people from the deep state or the government or whatever, somebody finds a giant, let's say, a giant skeleton or some kind of some artifacts that aren't supposed to exist or whatever. These guys come in right away, snatch it up, take it away, and they'll a lot of times even say, "Oh, we're just gonna we're gonna go take this to be preserved and blah blah blah." Mm -hmm. But then when you actually contact the Smithsonian or try to contact the government or whoever to ask about it, like, "Hey, this was found here. Like, where is it?" And they'll deny outright that that ever happened. They'll deny it ever existed. They'll even ridicule you. Um, there's a guy we had on the show named um, uh, Floyd Wills who uh, he wrote a book and it's a really good book about centered around the, the red haired giants and the giant skeletons and stuff that have been found. And he did his own investigative work and, and he would write letters to the Smithsonian and he would uh, try to contact people and they all, every single one of them like outright dismissed, uh, dismissed it, uh, denied that any of that existed or was ever found or that they knew anything. And a lot of it was even this kind of like condescending tone of like ridiculing ridiculing that idea and that he would even ask that you know <laughs> yeah so that's who these people are like they they will not they will never admit you know because there's a huge cover-up going on and it's systematic you know and there's a structure um, too it's compartmentalized as well there's another native american chief gold my eagle he, he recently passed away um but he had a he didn't knew of a story he was near chaco canyon actually and in, in the southwest and he was visiting and there was a government group there excavating or removing artifacts or something from a cave. And they were bringing out giant, like sarcophagus, giant coffins, basically. Mm -hmm. They brought these big boxes and, and uh, the rumor was, is that they were giant skeletons and the Smithsonian, they were going to airlift them away. They were so big. And mm -hmm. they, he was there to witness this. And, and they, he said that when they were removing these from, wherever cave this was, this dust storm came and like this tornado, like this dust devil came and it just hit the whole, the whole site. And it took these boxes up into the air and it just scattered them everywhere. But when they fell, the skeletons were gone. They were just empty boxes. Hmm. And it's just like some sort of weird, like divine intervention type of thing. Um, so or whatever like i believe like if we're going to talk about like everything is living i do think these mountains have like a some sort of a security system that would be mm -hmm. natural like uh weather anomalies and stuff like that can be considered uh, it's almost like a security system so they weren't going to allow the smithsonian to come and take that even analyze it do whatever so whatever happened to it who knows but it's just really interesting that you know we have a story like that, you know, it's just take it or leave it. You know, there's no evidence of this story besides, you know, chief golden Knight telling it, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> big question I have is 
I, you know, I think I and many people have heard of the stories in Afghanistan of uh, alleged American soldiers encountering red-headed giants in the caves of Afghanistan. Um, there was a painting done of soldiers with one captured. How true it is, I don't know. But do you think they're still on the earth today, these giants, alive and functioning? Oh, yeah. I th well, if, if anything, they're in the earth or in the crust, like in the... Um, which we kind of covered that and yeah. we just did a webinar surrounding the in hollow earth and inner earth. But yeah, if I just simply put, yes, I think they still exist and reside okay. somewhere. Yeah. Very cool. Cause I obviously this stuff, I absolutely, I love it. Um, cause <clears throat> you know, every kind of, um, indigenous people have stories of giants, you know, not just right. the biblical right. text, which is all in the Bible for those that need that. Um, but like, you know, you look at Norse mythology, um, you have the trolls, um, you know, and they would, they would attack the, the Norsemen and, um, and the, the indigenous, um, New Zealanders and Australians. And they were over there. Basically every, oh, I'd say nearly every indigenous culture has stories, ancient stories of giants. And mm -hmm. I find it really fascinating that, um, that the possibility that they are still around, um, maybe just maybe the the kind of deep state government structure is keeping them at bay. Um, I don't know. If, or they may be wanting to stay away from us because we'd just kill them. I don't know. <laughs> or worship them, one of the two. Um, well, but, uh, uh, go on, sorry. It's interesting because uh, during our, our last webinar, I came across some information that talks about in the 1500s, uh, the Catholic Church ordering that these entrances to underground tunnels, cave entrances be sealed up. And there's official documents of this. This isn't some rumor. We have the documents. I, I saved some of them on my computer. Um, the Catholic Church literally ordered the surface people. The, the, the thing was they wanted them to stop doing business with the subterranean culture. So there was trade and business being done between the, the inner earth the dwellers and the giants and then the surface. Well, they ordered to have the, all those sealed up. So a lot of the times when we see these cave entrances and tunnels sealed up the, there's a theory that it's not necessarily to keep us out but it's to keep whatever is down there in right so mm -hmm. and and who knows what that who knows what sealing those entrances does to the underground uh ecosystem right and who knows what yeah. it does to their way of life there so who knows what that looks like but it's something interesting to consider and I really do like Graham Cave. There's a cave here in uh, St. Louis in Missouri. It's the first known Native American historical site in Missouri that was identified as a historical site. And it, they found these incredible stone, like this stone council round table, like in there, something that doesn't look Native American at all. And they have photos of it, but it was like this stone central podium. And there's these stone like stools all the way around it these pedestals all the way around it, it was like some council chamber mm -hmm. and there was some amazing artifacts and stuff and they filled that entire cave in they filled it they sealed it all off put a fence over it and i have to ask myself what they on the, their description is to preserve it but that's not that's not preser preserving history that's destroying it or they that cave goes a lot further down than we realize and they're trying to keep something down keep something in there and keep us out right. keep us out right. keep it hidden yeah yeah it's not for preserving yeah i mean i was i was just at that cave uh, a couple weekends ago and i literally like there's a fence and then there's like a big gravel pile that goes all the way up to the ceiling but there's like a like a foot or two at the top of the gravel pile and i always wondered like if you can climb over that pile and get down into the cave so what did i do Go ahead and arrest me now. I went, I broke in through the fence. And I, I <laughs> Rebels squeezed, of disclosure. I squeezed <laughs> in like the, the tiniest, are watching right now. Yeah, the tiniest <laughs> area. And I got in there. And um, and it's interesting because they have all there's like sandy gravel on the other side of the fence, and it's all raked perfectly smoothly. So I feel and I feel like that's intentional so they can see if there's any footprints. Right. So obviously I was making footprints and I had a headlight lamp on. This was like at nine o'clock at night and I climbed up over and I'm That's like, like on my horror, stomach. Horror film material this Tyler. <laughs> right. I climbed right. up. I I've climbed up. 
<laughs> exactly. I climbed up and I tried to get over that pile. I was all the way at the ceiling of the cave and, and it's not, they filled it all the way up. There's no getting down there at all. Like it was, and it was really disappointing. And I, and then on the way out, I had a crystal in my pocket and I just left it right there and left some clear footprints just so they knew I was there and <laughs> we <Cool>. got out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, just interesting side note. It, no, I, I love all this stuff. Um, and I think it perfectly relates to the Cahokia Mounds and, and where this takes us because, you know, we've, there, there is a real battle going on in the scientific community right now. Of We've got the likes of kind of Graham Hancock um, who are really, really pressing the boundaries of what is acceptable science. That, that yeah. statement is totally unscientific. I had a friend once who did a, a university um, thesis um, I can't even remember what it was about. I remember it years ago, um, and it was, it was something extremely. Uh, it was br it was a brilliant thesis, um, but she, she was marked down on it because it went against known science, and she got like yeah. a low mark. And, and it was outstanding. And it's like it was like sorry, yeah. what? You know, they'll, they'll, use the, they'll use the word proven science, or mm -hmm. so they like to they like to use these words to psychologically manipulate people's mm -hmm. beliefs. So. They want you to believe something in science or whatever. They'll say proven. It's proven. No need to look at any further. It's proven. Done. Just believe it. Yeah. And they'll so say they debunked, well. debunked or baseless or something like that for something they don't want you, or pseudoscience or pseudo archaeology for something they don't want you to believe. They'll just make you think it's ridiculous to even believe it. Don't you don't mm -hmm. even need to look at that. Just don't. It's it's been debunked. It's, You're it's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. you know and the reality the truth is usually all in that end and the stuff they don't mm -hmm. want you to look at and think it's you know I, I have to make I have to make a com I have to make a comment right now about Charnel. Um so if somebody's watching this with no audio they can totally pick up on what the conversation is about based on her body language and her reactions. <laughs> she, she's, she's over there she's like totally and she's doing all the gestures and you can, <laughs> yes. you can like, you can kind of get an idea and I'm not making fun of you. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> like that. Exactly. Yeah. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. Somebody, somebody's going to um, screenshot that now. And yeah. Right. Oh my God. Charnel. Quiet over there. Charnel, say it. You got anything to add to all this? I'm just kind of blown away because I wasn't sure what it was. And what's interesting is um, we just drove to um, Fort Myers um, mm. from Louisiana to go see Matchbox 20, which is so awesome, <laughs> um, nice. for like third time or whatever. But um, <laughs> who's counting? Um, but we saw some mounds like in Florida's flat. And yeah, there's yeah. mounds in Florida. Yeah. Okay, because we mm -hmm. drove and we saw this huge thing and we were like, I mean, it was massive in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, it took a while to even get to the end of it we, as we were driving. And I was like, um, it could be what something. is that? You know, we didn't know if it was yeah. man-made. And then Brian was like, that does not look man-made at all. And I wondered if that was kind of where y'all's thing was about. And I mentioned that to him and I was just like, you know, there's, there's got to be some sort of ancient something. I'm like, I wonder what's inside. And, you know, they had like a, you could drive up it. We didn't because it was too far away from our goal of where we were going. But uh, there was two that we saw on the way. And I was like, where are these things coming out of anywhere? But I definitely didn't know they had stuff in Missouri. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, they're all in, over. Yeah. yeah. And there is a local history of mounds in Florida. While I was filming while we were filming the documentary, I was in Florida and, and just happened to be around some people. And they started talking about some mounds in, uh, in, uh, Siesta Key, Sarasota area. And, and they were really close to where we were and there's no really online history, but there's a local history. And it, there, so there are known mounds and that's the thing like in St. Louis, while we were researching for this, you really, once you dive into that and you set your intention that you're going to start researching and filming yeah. this, um, this information just kind of shows up and you find people and you talk to people, meet people that all know something and know someone. And it's like following the breadcrumbs. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting what we discovered. But uh, I definitely think that it wasn't just well, the mounds in, in Florida, they seem to be more unknown. The, Cahokia is a known historical site. 
Like it's a state mm-hmm. historical site. So it's people go there, the tourists, they have a museum and stuff. Uh, yeah. But the history is pretty much false. I mean, not all of it, but it's just they don't have the full picture. It's it's similar to like Serpent. If you know Serpent Mound in Ohio, that's the most popular one that most people mm-hmm. Where know, in Ohio? Or a lot of people know. Yeah, Serpent Mound is in southwestern Ohio, um, and it's the shape of a giant snake. It's a huge snake mound, effigy mound. And it's in, the interesting about that and actually Coke is that, so Serpent Mound is a huge snake, but you can only see that it's a huge snake from way high above, right? Right. right. So what's the point of them building a huge snake if you can't see that and unless right. you're flying in some kind of craft from above? Well, isn't that the... Isn't that the mound that Graham Hancock was denied access to? Yeah, yeah he went yeah. to it and they, they well, he's been to it before, but then he tried to go to it for his recent Netflix uh, documentary. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. And and they wouldn't let him in. They would not let Graham Hancock in because they claim he, he uh, pseudo archaeology, pseudo archaeology and pseudoscience. And they, so they censored him from even like going there. Because so well, really, really, they don't, they don't want him yeah. to rewrite that history. And what's and, interesting and about been, Graham, he's been to Cahokia, by the way, too. He's talked about Cahokia in some of his books and stuff. So okay. Cahokia is it's it's more well known among people like Graham Hancock that are like really into this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the average person, yeah, most people have never heard of the Cahokia well, mounds. But Serpent Mounds a little bit more. Well, most of the feedback I got from people in St. Louis that watched the documentary is they had no idea about the stuff we were uncovering, and they've grow, they grew up here, and I was the same way. I'm like, this is right. I didn't know. I grew up in St. Louis. I didn't know until like right under I, our noses, and you know. But what's interesting about Graham Hancock is which uh, he addresses the giants because you can't ignore that the giants come up in all these cultures. But he thinks it's like a metaphor, or he thinks it's like symbolic mm-hmm. or something. He mm-hmm. doesn't believe. Like he refuses to jump over that hurdle that giants right. actually existed. So he denies the existence of giants and he just thinks it's all lore. All the stuff about giants all over the world, which either he's being paid to say that, which is likely because he's such a prominent name. He's been on Joe Rogan or yeah. or he just really doesn't want to let go of his old beliefs. And Well, he gets he, enough crap as it is from the mainstream everything yeah. so he probably is like well if i go there then they're really gonna just everyone's gonna really write me off as a mm-hmm. crack or as yeah a, it's as actually a, a wise move if you want to get people thinking outside the box but not lose them you know yeah because yeah. to awesome. me graham hancock and certain people like him are, are really good um for intro level people that are right they yeah. yeah they're not into any of the stuff that we're into right so they're he's yeah. him and like i don't know you could even say like Stephen Greer or some of these people. It's like they're good for like the people that are just getting into these topics of like an intro. Mm-hmm. Or Aaron, you're frozen. No, is he frozen? And then, you and the, then it, 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 like, oh, okay. Am I frozen? You're, you're back. back. Now. Okay, sorry. Right. Carry on. Am I frozen? You're back. Can you guys hear me? I can hear yeah. you. He's completely frozen on my end. I don't know about you guys. I can. I see him. Okay, that's good. As long as you guys can see him, it's on your end. Like he stopped moving and everything. No, he stopped mind. moving for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, oh. now he stopped. Maybe mine has a drag or something. It might be his. He was having internet connections. Um, well, we can just. Uh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Hey, you're back. My back. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Jacob um, Ross clearly didn't want to talk about right. that. Um, <laughs> You're being targeted. Right. Um, cons- yeah, they don't want you to talk, Aaron. Right. <laughs> I'm being targeted. They don't want any of us to talk. That's what they're trying to do right, right no, now. They they, exactly. They, uh, they try to like, isolate. He's exposing, isolate. He's exposing the gatekeepers. Shut them down. Right. right. They um, try to isolate everyone with their uh, technology so they don't bond, you know? Right. Think about what the technology is doing. Everyone has their own alters and screen names and TikTok accounts, and Instagram accounts, and and you think you're communicating people, but it, communicating with people, but what it's actually doing is isolating everyone. Mm-hmm. And it's like a trick. It's like that. Um, I don't know. It's just like trickster energy, and we're all being isolated by the technology instead of being brought together. And that's why mm-hmm. having these events are important. 
Right, yeah. Um, I was talking to <clears throat> someone recently and, you know, someone in this community um, and um, they were saying that certainly in the coming days, the, the, it's going to be vitally important that we meet in, in the physical, um, you know, increasingly important that, yes, OK, shows like this are great. Um, but certainly with the way AI is going and things like that, they can so easily manipulate even just slightly. They could even alter the shape, the movement of your mouth. <laughs> And the words and stuff. Yes. It's gonna get wild. Well, the new I just saw at the gym yesterday, the new iPhone commercial. It said, um, the the commercial showed a picture of like a group selfie, and two of the people weren't smiling. And they said, Now you can add a smile to your friend's face. And they click the face and it makes the person smile. So everyone in the photo is smiling and their eyes are open now. I mean, just little things like that that are going to slowly introduce into our technology. Exactly. We are not going to, like, nothing. You cannot trust your eyes. At all. Like, well, you, just can't you, are, you, are, you already can't. And you already can't. But, like, if and what people are going to do, like, it's not, like, social media is just going to become, like, it's literally going to become AI avatars of all of the users. They're not even themselves anymore. Like people aren't going to know who these real people have, are. Have you seen um, Black Mirrors ever? Yeah, um, the, oh, yeah. the show. Oh, dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Black yeah. Mirror right here. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's Ooh. what TV. No, that's your what TV Black Mirror is. is. It's your phone or your TV. I, mm, your well, computer the, screen. Did you see the episode where like I can't remember the name of the actress, but like they basically took her face and made a whole movie. Or took her. Uh, avatar and made a movie about her and she was doing all these weird things and you know it wasn't her she never did the movie and right like right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy well, yeah it's like uh joe rogan said his daughter asked him she's like dad did you do this commercial and like she showed him the commercial and he's like nope he goes that's not me but somebody it was all ai and somebody took his voice and made him say things he didn't say. And they were using his voice and his face as an advertisement for their product. Mm -hmm. And, and that's well, how, that's how crazy it's getting like in movies. Like they've been doing yeah. it in movies. Now they don't need actors and actresses anymore. Like if they've died, like princess Leia in the last star Wars, like totally CGI, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or, um, my deep, kids, deep fake but, technology, mass yeah. CGI. Yeah, like, my kids played that sh um, country song, and it was like Trump singing it and Obama and bought, like. Have you guys heard that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all like oh, AI yeah. voice. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Oh my god! You know, it's very hard to tell nowadays. It is. It's again just to, to reiterate the importance that we, you know, stay in touch with each, with each other outside of screens and things because it makes me wonder. You know, with everything that happened in 2020. Um, you know, everyone was separated, everyone was forced into their homes, everyone was forced to communicate through a screen. And I'm like, I think it's by design, you know, that they're trying to almost program us that this is the way forward, this is the future. And I think we, we kind of have to resist that, that like things like conferences and um, events right. and gatherings are going to be increasingly important in the days ahead. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, then you can pick up, I mean, yeah, we can pick up on people's vibes through through the screen. Um, but when you're in person, there's no mistaking where a person's coming from. You know, when you're in the same right, room right. as someone, you can feel them, you know? Right. Um, yeah, and that's that's one of the big reasons we don't have Zoom speakers at our conference. A lot of conferences mm -hmm. will have, like, somebody on the bill, but you get there yeah. and it's just a Zoom presentation. I'm like, we do that all year long. Like, the whole purpose of this is to get away from the screen. Yeah. Especially when and they like, don't announce that it's going to be a Zoom presentation. You get there and yeah. they're like, oh, this that's person is on that. Right. <laughs> right. Like, oh, well, but it it's such a it's such a fake energy like it's not like nobody wants to go in fly drive to wherever venue sit in an audience and then watch somebody on a zoom screen we do that every single day exactly right yeah. every single day it's like fine that's for you know doing shows like this it's great but yeah the whole point of a conference is to be in person right be, be in person, you know? yeah i anytime yeah, i've been to a conference and there's a zoom speaker even if i want to listen to him i i just leave the room i didn't come halfway across the country to watch a movie you know yeah like yeah. not that it's right. a movie but like i'm just i'm not here for that i want to see the person and interact right. with them and right. go talk to them after <laughs> the show right. yeah well, see the dog agrees, yeah, dog agrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. confirmation 
<clears throat> no, and I, like I say, I think um, particularly with people, um, <clears throat> you know, for me, when, when I've been to events over the years, um, th there's kind of a magic there as well. And, and um, you know, I've, I've spoken publicly about things that I've seen and experienced in public gatherings, because I think, you know, whatever entities are there, whether it be angelic or extraterrestrial or whatever, <laughs> that's when they're, that's where they're going to be. They're not on a Zoom call. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. When people get together, they're attracted to that. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you clear the air and, and, you know, I think it's important that when people come to these gatherings, particularly like conferences like yourself, you know, do a clearing, you know, um, come with a high vibe and add to the atmosphere. You know, everyone's mm -hmm. a participant in that respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff at conferences. Um, you know, I mean, for, for all its <laughs> all its faults, um, you know, when I, I was I was a proper conference hopper um, back in the day. You know, a, a speaker would come over from America to the UK, and I'd drive down, and this, it was just the atmosphere and the vibe. You know, everyone's excited, and there's an energy, and and mm -hmm. and you know, we've seen you know supernatural things happen. We've seen miracles, and you know, mm -hmm. feathers manifesting, all that kind of stuff. You know, um, it's like it's like the other side of the veil likes to meet with us when we're in that yeah. place together, you know? Yeah. So and we're activating we're... each other. We're all activating each other yes. in person when you're there in person, you know, it, yeah. there's something about being all together physically that we're all, we're, we're all in each other's energy field. We're activating each other. There's this palpable, yes. like powerful energy to it. That and, every conference you can feel it. Right. And it creates this wave of light that just ripples mm -hmm. across across the globe um yes. yeah. that's unstoppable it's like a massive like ko punch to the dark you know yeah exactly. <laughs> and uh yeah it's 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 very beautiful I, I agree but um i think maybe we should be yeah qu quite strategic we should you know research sort of ley lines and start doing gatherings in strategic locations for that very reason you know the Kabbalah are doing that all the time they will have their ritualistic right. gatherings at specific locations for that right. reason i mean i've said it numerous times before that you know glastonbury music festival um here glastonbury is one of the most activating places in the world uh some say oh, yeah. it's at the heart chakra of the of the planet or one of mm -hmm. them um yeah yeah uh you know, and, and I think uh, there was there was a Glastonbury festival this year that Laura Eisenhower came over to. I couldn't get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, but I think we, we should do something. Let's do something. In I've never actually been to Glastonbury. Would you believe it? I, I haven't either. I've never I've never been to the U or I've been to the UK. I've been to the London airport. That's it. <laughs> that's okay, okay, right. Other than that, yeah. I've never been to the UK. So I, I, yeah, I need to get over there. We'll have to do something over here because, like we, I say, there's there's a lot of sites, a lot of sites that you could go to. Um, yeah. I mean, particularly in the north as well. You know, it's interesting about the ley lines that you mentioned that because that is something we covered in the film also mm -hmm. and how a lot of the ancient battles and wars are strategically fought on the ley line intersections. Right. So that when you have the blood from that battlefield, that blood is being spilt into the ley lines, into the global mound matrix, right? Not trauma. Yeah. So they have their like archon grid and then there's a natural grid. So they're, but what they're trying to do is hijack the natural grid and literally spill blood into that ley line. And uh, even famous murders like uh, Link, Abraham Lincoln, uh, those aren't randomly chosen. When they, when they decide to murder a big prominent name like that, most likely that's a ley line intersection or it's a vortex point. And they mm -hmm. understand like that's going to, corrupt and that the time. even further yeah even and the, the timing of when they do it is also a portal usually or yes that's well that's what happened with the the hawaii the maui fires yep. um that was during the syrian portal and yep. uh max spears used to talk about the syrian portal being um the alistair crowley used to utilize the serious or serious Syrian portal all the time to bring yeah. in the negative Syrians. And he actually was married on that portal. And then the song, uh, rain of fire by Johnny cash, Max Spears said mm -hmm. that was actually a song that was supposed to be represent the hellfire club. And they were in the, the rain of, or the ring of fire, I'm sorry, ring of fire was a ring of fire, satanic ritual for the hellfire club. And mm -hmm. the Which Maui fire, the Maui fire, games. Mm, and the club. fire just happened to be on the Syrian portal. And then what did everybody see from the sky? If you happen to see the footage, 
there was a perfect ring of fire, like a perfect circle of fire. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I thought Syrian portal, Aleister Crowley, Johnny Cash, ring of fire, satanic ritual. Boom. That's exactly yeah. what the Maui fire was. This is a massive mm -hmm. satanic ritual. And right. on, it's on funny the how, Syrian portal. It's funny how obvious it, you can see it as clear as day when you know about this stuff. It's like, that's it's right. so obvious. Yeah. You're like, wow, yeah. that's right. There it is. They're just doing it. But, the, but most people have no idea. So that it's right in your face, but you don't see it. And you can just say that for like so many right. things. And, the, the good news is, though, all you need to do is buy a blue hat, then you'll be fine. So, yeah, blue right, hat. Right. I fell for it. I went, I shared it. I, I fessed up. Paint your roof blue, dress. All I mean, up. paint yourself blue. You're good. Too little, too late. It's always like after the damage is done when we learn about everything, right? So, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I do, I do actually think that's not just a crazy theory. I really do think the blue color. I mean, there's evidence when the blue stuff isn't burning. Yeah. I mean, you got to look deeper, right? Yeah, yeah, right. and uh. And none of the celebrities' houses were touched. And there's like yeah. so many celebrities that live on Maui. And none of there's a houses. mile list, mile long of celebrities in Maui. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, anyway, we I mean we know all about really what went on there, but it's it's just I was we were talking about corrupting that ley line, and so mm -hmm. obviously, and oh no, you were talking about using specific dates, and that's what they did. So mm -hmm. it wasn't just a randomly timed fire; like they timed it during the Syrian portal when they can utilize that energy to hopefully perform whatever they were trying to perform you know and and how important it is now that we kind of like because again with anything be, <clears throat> the, the reaction has always been to demonize these things so if there is mm -hmm. an activating point in in cosmic point then we should know about this and utilize it for, for the greatest good yeah. um and well, i think that should. is kind of the, the mission for this generation really is that we're learning these things as a part of our spiritual awakening and we need to start activating these things for the good of humanity and the good of the planet. You know, well, that's the way I see it. Absolutely. Actually, where our conference is located is a is a spot like that. Um, people, have, ask, actually, yeah, people mm -hmm. have had uh, every year Sasquatch experiences. Whether people are yeah. hearing sounds in the woods, um, telepathically communicating, hearing whistles, um, things being moved around, like. Um, I, I even saw like these random tree breaks when I went back there, like three trees in a row, but they were like, one was broken. E each one was broken at a different height. Like they were stair stepped, mm -hmm. but they were freshly broken. And it, it was very clearly like squatchy, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um but, Amanda and I got a smell last year, which we could not explain, uh, so we, about. Went <laughs> we went back to our cabin and there, it was a beautiful, like flat florally, beautiful yeah. amazing smell there we we're like where is this coming from <laughs> like there's nothing mm -hmm. around that that's and that wasn't there part. before that wasn't there after that it was interesting just one well, I, that. so yeah yeah i experienced that at east eddie um and the mm -hmm. way it was explained is that if they want you, if you're welcome they put off a pleasant odor and they're welcome but if you smell mm -hmm. that foul stench that you hear people uh talk about then that's like their exactly. warning sign. Like they don't want you in around. You're they're in your you're in their territory, that type right. of stuff. Well, so it's really interesting. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't know if it's actually a ley line or not. But there's some wild energy and stuff going on mm. that uh, maybe someone to certainly uh, look, look into. You know, to research mm -hmm. maybe because I've tried to research ley lines and. When I thought I'd figured it all out, I realized that what I was looking at was actually a site that was designed to get people off the actual ley lines. So who knows what, what I don't know what, what resource we could use to, you know, find out where well, they are. But... Simple dowsing, you know, simple dowsing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You can find ley lines that way. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to basically any of the ancient sites, you can pretty much guarantee that they're already utilizing that, you know. Yeah, um, indeed. And, cool. you know, it's interesting, like sporting arena arenas, um, those are all, those are ley line intersections too. That's not strategic. Energy harvesting. That's not random. Yeah. That's all strategic. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've heard that, yeah. And the Vatican, I mean, big places, uh, D.C., they're all, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if you look, especially D.C. and the Vatican and, and London and certain places, you, you look at the layout of the city from above and it's geomantically set up. So it's like, there'll be like a, the inverted pentagram like dc there's a clear inverted pentagram the whole layout right. of the city yeah and then yeah. you got the washington monument which is an obelisk with a giant pool of water in front of it mm -hmm. 
Well, that's right. a technology right there. <laughs> like, right. That's exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's when you yeah. think they just did that. Oh, because it looks nice or whatever. No, and then right. and then in Vatican, there's also an obelisk. London, there's an obelisk. Why do they well, keep putting uh, obelisks on these strategic locations over the planet? Well, funny you should say that actually, because my hometown, which is called Blackpool, um, mm -hmm. here in the north of England, we have one as well um, yeah. on the promenade. And um, interesting history for my hometown. I need to. I mean, it's local knowledge. Uh, Hitler's plan for. Um, sorry, if you can hear my dog in the background there. Um, there you go. Uh, Hitler's plan for what the takeover of the United Kingdom is. He he vowed he wanted Blackpool, my town, is his own town and and the place where people will go and have holidays. And he did not want anybody to bomb my hometown. There was a specific instruction: do not bomb Blackpool. Um, and I just found it interesting, like, what did he know? Because he was all into the the kind of, like, ancient history and, uh -huh. um, yeah. you know, Antarctica yeah. um, and the occult and all that kind of stuff. He was he was really into yeah. that. So I, that's something I've got to look into. Um, yeah, I mean, we sure. host, host the um, <clears throat> annual Conservative Party conference here as well. There are underground tunnels, which, by the way, uh, during the COVID, <clears throat> um, they were filled in. They were concreted in. Um, really? So I just, all these things, you know, are adding up to a bigger picture, but uh, right. more research needed <laughs> mm. for sure. Yeah, there's, a, and it's interesting, you know, talking about the the DC and then um, the Vatican and um, what's London. the other one? London. Yeah. Sorry. London, yeah. I, what, what was the other one? I thought there was anyway. Um, DC, I mean, Vatican, and London are the three. Yeah, main, that's what I was trying to say. Three anyway, ones, you know. the three, the yeah. three obelisk right so anyway that's you know if you know anything about the act of 1871 and how you know the united states is a corporation and not an actually a country after mm -hmm. the act of 1871 so technically we aren't even like living by the constitution anymore but um mm -hmm. and it's all owned by what they call three city empire and the three city empire is is dc the Vatican and London, and there's yeah. the, and they're all three laid out the same, the same Freemasonry mm -hmm. uh, layouts and the obelisk and everything. And, and they all and there's no, different yeah, no coincidence. Vatican's, yeah. yeah, Vatican's a spiritual control center. Right. Uh, London's financial control center. DC is military control well, center. Yeah, under the Holy Trinity. Trinity. Yeah, yeah. And what's interesting, if you really, if if that's true, then that would mean that. Um, we aren't actually born into the United States as we know it. We're, we all are owned by the district of Columbia and like mm -hmm. we all technically belong to the district of Columbia. It's not even American. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's yeah. not even, <laughs> not, it's not even American. It's yeah. like the so, city of London is separate to the United Kingdom, you know, and right. the Vatican mm -hmm. city is separate to Italy, you know, DC mm -hmm. is its own separate thing. Yeah, exactly. It's all that. Right. But that's where right. all of our birth certificates and everything um, yeah. are from. So, yeah, I mean, oh. it's, re it's really wild to think about that. And it triggers it a lot of people. And, all right. I, I, we're well gone over the hour here. But so again, I was talking to a friend in this in our, our community recently. Um, and we were talking about how um, and I'd love to get you guys perspective on this, maybe as a finish. Chanel, um, a yeah, sorry, maybe. We got go, to go wrap up. But yeah, go ahead and finish. And we'll Just get one last thought. Um, that, you know, the, the heel prick, they take our DNA. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously they say it's not only stored at the Vatican, but what I've heard recently is that they actually clone us off that heel prick. As oh, well. yeah. I'm you sure. Think that's I'm sure. Thing? sure. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think well, cloning, I cloning is way easier than we think it is, for one. Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. movie Boys from Brazil shows you step by step how they how easy it is to clone somebody. And that was old technology. Like right. they don't, they don't need shit to clone you now. In, like they, single strand of DNA, right? Supposedly is yeah. all they really need. Uh, right. yeah. hair. Yeah. yeah, I mean hair. it helps. It helps what if you happened? want like the full memory and stuff to take a, a piece of the skull from right here in front of the pineal gland, according to like all the mm -hmm. um, the rappers and stuff who claim to be cloned. That's what they do. If they uh, want the full memory, they have to do yeah stuff right. like that. But yeah, right. if you just right. clone your physical body. They can do I mean, that. I'm a clone. Like in case you didn't know. I mean, we all are. <laughs> well, we're all clones. What's interesting is the the Halo series on Paramount Plus. That that show is like oh, the game. Yeah, but it's a show. The, yeah, they made a show. 
the series, which I think is excellent. I just rewatched it and it's even better the second time and it's total secret space program disclosure. But yeah, something right. that they say in the show that I think we might have wrong is, is that when they abduct the people, the children from their home and they kidnap the children from their home and bring them into the program, the super soldier program, mm -hmm. uh, they're not depicting a 20 and back type of technology in the show. In the show, they replace the kid with a clone right off the bat. So they replace, they abduct the original kid and they replace him with the clone and the clone goes on to live the life with the family. And the reason they, the reason that they do that is because they can't recreate the innate abilities of that person in the clone and they need those people for their abilities. So they wow. take the A, they take the A body, the front altar and use that in the programs. And then me, this version right now is the clone who is living out my life. Wow. And in that show, but I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's really what's going on here with that. And we're and all maybe, clones. but people have like a spiritual awakening experience. It's the consciousness coming back. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Who knows? <laughs> right, right. Anyway, right. I know. Well, I, know we, I know we have to wrap up. So now, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we have another. I got a show to prep for, but you guys are awesome. And yes. um, thank you. You're awesome. We could literally go for hours. And we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, tell us how to find the documentary, how to find you, like all the stuff. And then, yeah. Um, the documentary can be found on our YouTube channel, but we encourage people to go to CahokiaUntold.com where there's a lot more information. All the, you know, the write-ups and everything about the documentary are there and an option to donate for future projects. We already are filming a second documentary right now um, surrounding the Secret Space program, but um, it's in the early stages. But any of those donations that come through for the first film are going to the second film. Mm -hmm. And so that is encouraged. But it, you can also just go to Journey to the Truth podcast and YouTube and find it there as well. Awesome. awesome. Well, and you guys who are, if you guys are interested in connecting with us, um, you, you know where to find me at drsharnell.com and um, I'm all over social media and what have you. And I really do encourage you guys to watch the movie or watch the documentary. I'm going to make sure that I watch it tonight just because now I'm like super intrigued and it is good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. Where can we find you, Craig? Oh, usual socials, Facebook, Craig, Martin Walker. Again, I keep getting people from requesting me on my, um, ulterior account which is me in a military uniform i use that for other things now craig martin walker is my account i've got my um uh meditation channel uh band and ascension also playing with a band called 10 check them out um that'll do for now i think yeah yes and we really do appreciate the members i want to give a shout out to the members yep. we do <clears> thank <throat> you so much we would not even be able to do this without you guys and honestly i don't know if everyone knows how much prep work and time and editing and graphics and just there's yeah. a lot that Woman goes money. Mm -hmm. so much and um even if you can only be a member for a month or two believe me everything everything ha helps so much so um please do consider being a member if you are not a member and um we do a lot of cool things for you guys um extra not to mention all the all the previous shows that are just free you know, free to you all the time anyway. Um, but um, so do consider being a member and you can see the membership to join is only four ninety nine is, is a start. There's different levels to get different things, but the link should be in here in the description too. And we look forward to having you guys back again and seeing you in real life one day soon. And thank mm -hmm. you again so much for your time on and we just love you guys so much. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. It was nice you guys. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, y'all have a good one. Thank See you. you. All right. See bye. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.